So I'm going to be walking through a max patch that I made for an interface design class that I'm taking currently. I'm using the leap motion as the input source, and I'm also using a physics library in the application max. So this is the interface to the leap motion that I'm getting all my uh, finger location data from. If I turn it on and move my hand over the leap motion, you can see that it's tracking my hand in 3D space, all the position of the fingers, etc. So this leap motion is outputting data into this fingers subpatch. If I open it up, you can see, for example, if I move my right hand above the leap motion, you can see that it's tracking the tip position in the x, neg negative and positive, y, neg negative to positive, and z, negative to positive position of just the tip of my index finger. So that's essentially the, the output of the, of the leap motion. And so I take it into this, this little patch that I made where I, I take two little bits from the leap motion. The, the index finger output, and I take the first three values, which are the x, y, and z spatial coordinates. And I also take another thing that the leap motion tracks, which is the orientation of the hand. So in this case, I'm taking the right hand, and I'm taking its palm normal which is the orientation. And so if I move my hand over the leap motion, you can see, for example, on the, 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 the second value here, it's close to 90, like 0.9. If I rotate it up, it goes to zero, essentially, and back. And that's as I rotate my hand 90 degrees. So I'm taking these values. These are just sh showing that out of this output. This is the value, and I'm also sending it into this project right here. And this project is this project. So in this case, this, these outputs, sorry, these inputs correspond to these right here. One, two, three corresponds to one, two, three, and this fourth one is down here. So th this is the actual input data from my fingers. In this case, I'm, I'm taking it, and you can see in, as I move my hand, for example, with uh, looking at, I'm going to open up this finger subpatch again, you can see that the tip position goes from a little more than 200 in either direction, so there's a big range of these values, but those values won't necessarily fit in, in my world box that I'm rendering here. My world box is only five by five by five. So I need to scale those down. So I scale it from, actually the max is around 380. And so I scaled it from negative 380 to positive 380 down to around 15 to negative 15. And I did the same thing with these. These are slightly different just so that they kind of fit more within the, uh, the position that I wanted the hand to be in. So in this case, I pack these values up into one thing, and I feed them into the position of multiple things. A physical body, so this is a physics simulation of a body in the shape of a sphere, and it's currently at, at a certain scale. This position is also going into... Once, I didn't mean to make that patch cord. This position is also going into a few other things you can see. It's going into this grid shape. This grid shape is what actually is shown in the renderer. In this case, it's a sphere also, and I'm giving it this little blue blue color. It's also going into a fizz.ghost. This is a sort of um, like gravitational force field. So in, th in this case, the, the physical body that um, is involved with collision detection, the grid shape, which is the actual rendered visual sphere, and the fizz.ghost, the force field, those are all getting the same position that's being taken from the placement of my fingers. So as you can see, as I move my hand forward and back and left and right, I'm spoiling you a bit for the uh, behavior of the letters. Just ignore that for a second. So as I move my hand in space, you can see that the position values are being updated 
And those position values are going into the fizz.body, the grid shape, and the fizz.ghost. I'm doing a few other things here. So in, in this case, the fizz.ghost has a force. And that force can be negative or positive, which means it can attract or repel. In this case, that this fourth value here, I'm, which I'm taking from the palm normal of my right hand. So I, I, it, for, for this instance, I'm taking the, the rotation of my right hand and I'm putting that into the force. So as I, route my, as I rotate my hand 90 degrees, you can see the force goes from negative values, which is, attra which is attraction, to positive values, which is repulsion. So I'm getting this kind of multi-hand thing where I can have my left hand placing this point in space and my right hand changing whether or not it's an, it's an attractive or repulsive force and its strength. So you can kind of get this multi-hand manipulation in play. As you can see, I'm also scaling this in different ways. Since this was going from 0 to negative 1 in this case, or negative 1 to 0, I'm scaling this up to around 100 or negative 100 to get some pretty sizable values so you can really see when the repulsion or the attraction comes in. Um, I'll, I'll actually start at the beginning again. So I've created this, this um, whole rendering thing, and it's going into this jit.gl.render, and currently... Didn't mean to make that patch chord. Currently, this camera is set at the coordinate 0, 0, negative 8. I could change negative 8 to something different, and it would move farther away from the letters that you see currently. Currently, there's no gravity at all. I could make this negative 9.8, which is Earth gravity, and its scale is 5 meters by 5 meters by 5 meters. Oh, I won't go into that now. I also have a light right now. So as you can see, when I move my mouse in, Rather, if when I move my hand above the leap motion, you can see that there's a reflection in the top left of this blue circle. And that's caused by the light that I'm bringing in. And this light has a nice white diffuse, so it'll kind of light things pretty evenly. Uh, let me get into the meat of another bit of it. I have these letters. These letter forms, in this case, I have rendered in Blender and I'm importing them into each of these jit.gl.models, which essentially can render 3D models in this space. So I've, I've loaded in the D and the E, so each of these chunks is a single letter. You, you can kind of see that I'm tessellating it out. This is probably isn't the most efficient way of doing it. Um, I'll probably clean this up later. So I need to load an S, so I'll do read, choose my S. You can see it pops in right there. I'll do the same thing for I. I'll do the same thing for G. And I'll do the same thing for N. And now you can see that my whole word is in there. So you can see that they're kind of bouncing around. That's because I have a jit.fizz.6dof. This is a six degree of freedom spring. So I've given it these lower and upper limit in terms of its how much rotation the uh, these models and in this case these uh, these letters can move in and their displacement from the position that I've set them at so currently their position is so for for instance D is positioned at negative 2.5 in the x-axis and 0 and 0 on the on the y and z and you can see the position for E is negative 1.5. So I'm iterating them one unit apart from each other. And so that, that keeps on going into 0.5 and 1.5 and 2.5, etc. So they're all evenly spaced. So I'm also doing some things where these, these springs have different dampening and stiffnesses. And so I've sort of set them at a at a decent value so that you can get some amount of playback with them and they're, they're a little fun to move around, etc. I'm, I'm giving this, so that this jit.gl.material is connected to all of these models, which means that the models are being uh, given a color and some ref like uh, light receiving properties and light emitting properties 
by this single chit.gl.material, which is being colored by these swatches. If I wanted, I could turn off the material and you could see that they would just kind of disappear, which isn't exactly what I want, so I'm gonna keep that on. Um, I'm gonna ignore some of these other things. They're not strictly relevant. And I, I also have set a mass for all of them. So if I wanted, I could increase this mass to be more and then they would sort of be pulled in a sort of different fashion and have more inertia so the the harmonic oscillation that would be dampened down would take longer to really go down so i'm going to set this back to one uh because i kind of like the behavior being kind of fast so the last thing is from a patch made by cycling 74 themselves which I'll just bring it in and you can kind of see what it's like. I'll, I'll give this some more space so you can really get a sense for it. So I'll, I'll bring these in. These are mini multiple spheres and these are being attracted by this by the jit.gl.ghost that I was telling you about earlier. This So they're, they're being attracted right now and are kind of orbiting around this. So these spheres are also physical bodies jit.fizz.multiple so in this case these are these push the, the, the letters they interact with the letters when i move my hand into them and not so when i have all this going on this for, this becomes a very dynamic system where these these objects are pulled towards me and here's the fancy part when i bring my right hand in and i rotate it 90 degrees you can see that it changes from attraction to repulsion as they're pushed away from me. And I can bring my hand back, rotate it back to facing down, and now they're attracted again. So this whole system, I kind of just wanted... I This is really the first whole system that I built in Max. And I had a lot of fun exploring it. And so I feel like a lot of what I want the user to get out of this is a sort of sense of playfulness and a way to sort of explore the dynamics of the system in the way that over the course of the past week I've explored the dynamics of this incredible program, Max. And there's a lot of there's a lot that Max can do with audio processing as opposed to just this physics simulation that I'm doing right now. And I'm excited to get it into that as well. But in the meantime, I have this fun little system that you can play around with gravitation. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching.